Okay, today we are going to be using the Shat Cricut Loom. And I have it assembled. I'm going to start warping. This is the back apron rod. It is attached to one of the um, warp beams. It's the back beam. The top beam over this is called the warp beam, actually, because it will wrap around here. The warp will be wrapped until it's ready to use. The front top beam is called the cloth beam because as you're weaving your cloth, it gets wound around this beam here. There is a front apron rod that we will be tying onto in just a minute. To start with, um, I'll move the, this is the rigid heddle which your warps will go through. Let's move that out of the way just a minute. This will come back over the warp beam and you're going to put the brake on here and start winding this up. Because <clears throat> you want it up high enough so that you can start to attach your thread. I'm using a cotton warp thread today. I'm going to use one color to make just to make this process easier but as you'll see a little later in the film you can rewarp um, another scarf or another project later with different colors and it's really neat to give you kind of a platter or a checkered effect. Alright, <clears throat> I'm going to drop this and actually just set it on the floor because that will weight the thread a little bit. I'm going to come over here, tie, just tie a square knot onto the um, apron rod here. I don't want it going anywhere. Alright. I have, I'll show you from the front, I went ahead and measured on mine because I wanted to know without having to count up the spaces um, and the little holes each time I warp something. So that if I wanted a six inch scarf, I would know where to start and where to stop. This is my hook. Um, it's called a threading hook. It, you can see it here. Um, you can go in from either side. I find depending on from which direction I'm pulling the thread um, <clears throat> will determine whether I turn this up or down. Um, you can work with it and see what works for you. To start with, the thread is coming over the top here. <clears throat> I'm going to come in where I want my scarf to start. I'll pull this up and pull it through the slot. With this method, I'm just going through the long slots right now. I have a warping peg that I have clamped down to my kitchen table over here. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is just walk it over, put it around there, and kind of push it down. That's all I have to do right now. Next, I will come through the next long slot and since I went over the top of the apron rod, this time I'm going underneath. I'm going to come through here and pull through. And again, I just walk it over, place it around, and then I'm done. I'm going to continue doing this. I went under last time. This time I'm going to come around and pull over. So you'll alternate coming under and over each time, walk it through, place it over the peg. That is the first part. So let me finish with this and we'll come back and start going through the I middle. have all the threads coming through where I want them. So what I'm going to do is just cut this off at the end. And I'm going to come around the apron bar in the back and just tie, tie this off tightly with a double knot.
Easier said than done. Okay. And there we go. And I can trim it so that doesn't hang off so much. All right. I'm going to go to the end over to my warping peg and collect all the strings in my hand. Just pull them straight off here, get them straightened up, and holding on to them, I'm just going to cut the end ends here. For right now, I'm going to tie an overhand knot just to kind of keep them in place. You can take the warping peg off now. Um, you're pretty much through with it. So what I'm going to do, I want to wind these up as tightly as I can and I'm holding these tightly here on the ends um, so they don't get wrinkled up. I want this to be as even as possible. I will wind and as you can see this is coming around the bottom beam here. When it has made um, pretty much almost a complete circle, I'm going to start inserting some paper. Um, I'm using wallpaper here. You can use heavy paper, you can use paper bags, anything you can recycle. I have used this um, uh, three or four times now. So it will hold up for you. I just insert this underneath here. The reason we do this is because if you don't, the warp threads can catch on each other and start tangling. Now you want to make sure when you're winding this, um, the brake is on here, and I pull every now and then to make sure that everything is staying tight. I want to continue to wind, trying to keep my the heavy paper here also from sliding over and getting in the way of my break because if you do it's it's just gonna catch it up you're not gonna be able to work and I kind of keep an eye on the threads from the front I want to make sure that they're staying untangled they're not getting knotted up and I will continue to do this until the warp threads are about 8 inches from the head. I have my ends about 8 to 10 inches from the heddle and if you notice the heddle is in what we call the neutral position down here in these back slopes. So we want to not only have the thread coming through these long slits here, but we want them coming through these holes in the middle. Um, I just call them eyes. I'm not sure what the technical term is for them. We want to take the first two strings. I try to separate these so I can keep up with um, the order I'm doing them. I'm going to use my threading hook again. I come through and pull one of these two threads through. The reason we were going over and under the um, apron rod on the back was so that we would have two in each um, of the long slits. That way one could be pulled through the eye and one is through the longer piece. And as I do them, just to stay organized, I throw them off to the side. Come in, reach behind, pull one through. Now I have two more. And I will continue to do this all the way across until I have the long slit and eye, long slit eye, all the way unto the end.